Hey, hey guys, we are back with some more Kind of Crafty Kenzie DIYs. That's gonna be my new opening. Let me know what y'all think down in the comments. No, I'm just kidding. But we are back, or I am back, and you're back. So yeah, we're back with some more DIYs, some more fall ones. I am not ready for Christmas DIYs yet. If you're with me and you're still on the fall train, keep watching because I have so, so many more fall DIYs coming for y'all in the next couple weeks and then I will shift over to Christmas. But let's go. This first DIY is so, so easy and you could actually use it all year round if you wanted to. So we're just gonna take this glass candlestick holder from the Dollar Tree. These are so fun and handy to work with. I always keep these in my stash because I find so much use for these all the time. So sometimes I like to give my glass items like a really nice coverage coat of chalk paint. Sometimes I like it to be streaky and kind of just thrown on there. For this particular DIY, I wanted it very solid. So I gave it two coats and I let it dry completely in between. I did not use my heat gun at all. Then I went ahead with this little, um, this, I guess it's kind of like a shadow box style thing. This is from Michaels. I got this on one of their sales and I only got it for 99 cents. Yes, I foregoed the screwdriver because it was too small for the little screws. I mean, I'm sorry, too big and I couldn't get it. I couldn't get the screws out to take the sawtooth hanger out, so I just used the scissors, and that worked just fine. Who needs tools when you have scissors? So then I went ahead and gave this entire um, little shadow box one good coverage of the white chalk paint as well. Then I went ahead and took my finger sander and went around all the edges of this little shadow box. I'll keep calling it that for now. <laughs> and even like on the corners. And then I did the same thing with my candlestick. I just very lightly went around it here and there, like on all of like the, um, you know, the edges and such like where it would be chipped the most. But you got to be very careful when you're doing this because chalk paint will come right off of glass. Then I went ahead and measured the best that I could to get the center of this little shadow box <laughs> so that I could, when I put it together, hopefully it would be centered and even, and it worked out pretty well. So I did use some E6000. This was before me and E6000 kind of broke up. And then I went ahead with some hot glue as well. And then I just glued that candlestick to the bottom of that little shadow box. As you can see, I made like a little tiered stand. So then I took some Spanish moss and kind of put it inside. I didn't glue it, so that's why I say this could be yours. Every time, guys, every video, I get a tongue twister. This could be used all year round. All you gotta do is take the insides out and decorate it with something else. I have a couple of these in my home and they are so fun and so cute just to sit around and do something with. So as you can see, then I went ahead with my um, very bad paint job of a little pumpkin here last year, and I just covered that mess all up with some pumpkin chalk paint. I did remove the little clip that was on this pumpkin and the stem. I did not replace the clip or the stem. I put my own little stem in, which are these like little um, dried out, um, like, uh, uh, what's it called? <laughs> vine what is it called? grapevine or something um my mom had in her garage that she gave to me and then i went ahead and made two of these pumpkins i made one orange and one white but as you can see i did the same exact thing to both i went ahead and distressed them both as well with just a little bit of truffle chalk paint not a lot i didn't want it to be overwhelming just a little bit of dirt on those pumpkins last year i was crazy about distressing i've lightened up a little bit as the time has gone on then I just placed them in that little tray, went around with a couple little pieces of box wood that I just cut off of some um, stems, or what are those called? Picks <laughs> from Walmart. Wow, my brain. Why does this always happen? Can you imagine what it's like to have a conversation with me? Like, it, it, ugh. Anyways, then I just made a little burlap bow out of some burlap ribbon that I believe I got from Amazon a really long time ago. I'll try to link it if I can. And then I just went ahead and dovetailed those bow ends, those tail ends. I was going to try to tie this to this, but it didn't work out. And I figured, well, it's just a little bit of burlap ribbon. I'm sure we can use it all year round. And this is how the first little DIY turned out. So easy. Let me know what y'all think.
If you are new to my channel today, I just want to take a second and say welcome. My name is Mackenzie, aka Kenzie. I am a stay-at-home mom to three little girls, and I am from a very small rural town in Pennsylvania. I am obsessed with anything to do with home decor, so I love to DIY, repurpose, turn trash to treasure, craft, upcycle, recycle, and of course, a thrift flip. So if you love stuff like that, you are going to love it here. I can also be found over on Instagram and on Facebook. All under a kind of crafty Kenzie and all of those links are in my description box of this video and in my bio now let's craft some more for the next DIY I am going to take these two signs from the Dollar Tree as they are cute especially the colors we all know how I feel about that glitter and I thought that instead of trying to cut them apart I could just do something else with them so we are just going to flip them over glue them together with some of Walmart's jumbo craft sticks and some hot glue and make one big sign out of this instead. I did take some spackling and kind of fill in that crack where those two signs met just to kind of help it not look like it was literally two MDF boards put together. I went ahead and removed the staples as well but as you can see you really didn't need to or I really didn't need to because I did cover those up with some paint stir sticks which I measured and cut down to fit my sign. I wanted to give it like a really nice rustic farmhouse like just a stained wood looking frame. So I did have to cut cut them down where they went across the top like widthwise. So it did take like one and like three quarters of one but then the ones on the side fit pretty well. I only had to use one on each side. Then I just used some of this Waverly Antique Wax and just gave it a really heavy coat. Then when I was done like painting them I just took a paper towel and wiped the excess off and then kind of rubbed that excess up along the sides and even on the edges of those paint stir sticks. I love Waverly Wax using it like a stain like this. As you can see, it even brings out that wood look in just like a paint stir stick. It's so nice and it doesn't stink or stain like actual stain does. So then I went ahead with some plaster chalk paint. Don't ask what I was doing before that. I actually had my chalk paint get really thick on me so I added water to it and that really just turned into a true whitewash, which is cool. It was actually my um, sheepskin color from Folk Art. So now this is um, Waverly's plaster on top of that. Then I'm going to use this little um, truck window cling that I got from Dollar General. They only had one. I was so bummed when my husband saw it. And he grabbed it because he knows I'm all about that truck. And he's really good. I haven't trained quite well. Though when he sees craft stuff out, he thinks I'll like. He grabs it for me. And my girls are the same way. So bless all their little hearts because they definitely keep me stocked up. So I just went ahead and Mod Podge this down really heavily. I put Mod Podge under it. And then I put the truck on top of it. And then I Mod Podge on top of that. That is the best way that I like to attach window clings to a sign. I then went ahead and took some of the pumpkins and leaves off of that same window cling um, page and just kind of put them sporadically all around. I did kind of have my frame on here a little bit to guide me that way when I put my, you know, my paint stir sticks on to frame the picture in, I wasn't going to actually cover anything up. There was a cute little phrase on this that I was originally going to use, but I went a different route and I used that somewhere else. You guys will see that in a later video. Um, but now I'm just going to go ahead and attach my little faux frame down and glue all of these painter sticks down around the edges. And to finish this off, I just went ahead and attached some nautical rope to the back with some hot glue, covered off that ugly mess with a little bit of burlap ribbon. And this big, beautiful fall farm truck DIY sign is all done. I absolutely love making signs like this. Let me know what y'all think down below. I want to take a moment and thank today's video sponsor, The Sweet Store. They were kind enough to send me this six pack of their multicolor 15 ounce large cafe style mugs they come in these colors and then they also are featured in their solid white this company is located on amazon and i will have their website link below they feature all kinds of other dinnerware and kitchenware everything is absolutely gorgeous and so hard to choose from this is these coffee mugs are multi-purpose and they are great for your coffee 
tea, your milk, hot chocolate, cake in a mug, you name it. They are the perfect size for a nice big cup of coffee on these crisp fall mornings. And they are comfortable to handle and hold. They're lightweight and there's plenty of space between the coffee mug handle and the actual coffee mug. I don't know if you guys have ever burnt your fingers, but I have many times. They are made with their pro grade porcelain, which is safe for dishwashers, microwave, oven, and freezer. And it is also made from a premium lead free chip resistant and a more sturdy porcelain than your stoneware. I am loving these colors and love the way they look in my kitchen and so excited to have them. I will have their website link below, like I said, and now let's get back to crafts. Last DIY today, I'm just gonna use this scrap block of wood. You guys know that my husband and I work with wood all the time, so I always have scrap pine and walnut and whatnot laying around. He tends to try to cut things off square or rectangular, nice shape like this for me because I can basically grab something see a vision and figure it out or I'll say hey cut this like this whatever so I love that he's crafty in wood and then I always have scrap wood at my access all the time so I, it is really nice having a handy husband I guess you could say so as you can see I just covered the entire block of wood with one good coat of white chalk paint then I'm going to use my glue stick and then just go ahead and glue down this beautiful scrap of paper from Hobby Lobby. I went ahead and cut it with my little utility knife just to give it a nice crisp edge. I did the same exact thing on the other side. That way both sides are nicely covered. I did leave the top, the bottom, and those two like skinnier sides completely bare. That's why I painted them white. And then I sanded off any excess scrap of paper. Then I just went ahead with my Waverly um, Antique Wax again and just went around the edges of the white and it just gave it a nice, um, you know, dry brush with the Antique Wax to give it a nice rustic look. I even hit the scrap paper a little bit just to give it that nice, rustic, dirty, pumpkin, farmhouse, you know all the things look. I just took some tumbling tower blocks and glued them together, attached them to the top of the little pumpkin, and then I almost burnt myself, and then <laughs> I went ahead with the wax and just dry brushed over those little tumbling tower blocks as well, just to blend them in with the rest. I did wipe off any excess wax that was there, and even on those little tumbling tower blocks, that way really wax brings out that wood look. It's so nice. Now these burlap leaves I get from Amazon. I will have them linked. I've used them quite a few times um, this fall in my videos. I absolutely love them. Those colors are just right up my alley this year. So I went ahead and just attached two on top of each other. That went well with the scrapbook paper I used. Then I did distress over them a little bit with some of the wax. Attached one of my little twine bows. And this adorable little pumpkin is all ready to go for fall. As always, thank you guys so, so much for hanging out with me. I am obsessed with fall and love making fall DIYs. Like I said in the beginning of the video today, I am nowhere near ready to start making Christmas. I know other people are on other channels, but not here. 
Kenzie is not ready for Christmas. I still have so much fall in my blood. So anyways, you guys, don't forget to give this video, this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not. I'd love to have you join my little crafty family. And another big thank you to the sweet store for sponsoring my video today. I highly appreciate it. Just like I highly appreciate each and every one of you guys. I'll catch you very soon in my next one. Bye.